Okay, when you first launch Sparks, you have a default workspace layout set by the factory. We've covered the browser, work area, properties, notes. We've covered the top with a ribbon and tabs. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a default layout and step through it. I'll cover the browser in more detail in a later video. Let's start with the start page. Um, and I'm just going to focus on the open project tab right here. I'm, I may cover these other tabs in a later video. But most of you are going to be starting here in the start page, open project. So if you have a project, you can select open project and find where it is and it'll open it for you. If you want to create a new project, let's go ahead and create a new project. We're just going to call this demo. And now we've got a new project loaded. Browser is empty, nothing in it. Title bar shows the name of the project is demo. Nothing else is going on, right? So what we want to do is be able to manage our project. So we'll, let's move to the right. You see in recent, every time you open a project, it'll show the most recent project that's open. So if I go and I click on the example that Sparks give us, gives us, you can see in the start page, it is at the top. All right, so it's the most recent project that's open, all right? So recent use, watch, so you can sort order. It's only 10 items deep, but you can sort them and so on, all right? I'm gonna go back to demo. You can see it's the most recent. Pinned, I love this feature when they added it. Always keep up because as you cycle through your projects and you might have many more than 10, that's all that's gonna be focused. Some of those projects you're going to want to get to on a regular basis. So you can right click on something that you want to pin. Pop up menu comes up. Pin connection. Look at that. It moved over to the pin side of things. So it'll always be here until I remove it. All right. So I can pin demo. I can remove this. When I remove it, it doesn't put it back in recent. All right. I got to go to open. I got to load it again and it's gonna come up in recent, right? So that's on the recent column that you see here versus the pin column. All right, team repository. Team repository is you're allowed to put Sparks in the cloud, Azure, AWS, any cloud. You simply select this, you give the connection a name, you can give it any name you want. The administrator is going to give you the URL the server you're going to connect to, including ports, and the model name. This is the SQL database name that you're going to be connecting to. And you can connect to cloud that way. Server connection. Server connection allows you to connect to many different server technologies. Um, I use all of these. So you pick one that you're going to use. You put in the server name and the other credentials. Do a test, make sure you got a good connection, hit OK, and whatever name you gave it up here in description is going to show up as the name of the project, right? Custom data sources, you can go through, and there's other ways to connect to data sources. And then URL, just another way to connect to a particular data source, right? Next is manage projects. Manage projects, you can see we only have one in here right now, and it's demo. It doesn't have the pinned sources here, only the recent ones. And you're able to manage those here. You can remove selection. You can also connect to your uh, SQL data sources this way. You can connect to your cloud this way. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel. I'll cover this and demo this as I'm connecting to SQL databases, connecting to cloud in later videos. Let's go back over to browser. Um, in the browser, again, I cover this in more in detail in another video. Let's go ahead and create a package and a diagram. We're just gonna accept the package name. You can call it anything you want here. And we're gonna create a diagram under this package using the same name, right? Using the same name. You can change the name again to anything you want under the package you just created. And you can choose between a plethora of diagram types. We're just going to use basic UML structural. We're going to choose class, hit OK, and we're going to double click our new diagram 
And here we go in our work area. We have a diagram ready to go. OK, let's recap. We covered the basic start page, how to load projects, create those, manage them in recent and pin folders. We talked about connecting to cloud data sources, SQL data sources, custom data sources. And we talked about manage projects button allows you to manage a project. We also created a package and a diagram and talked about how to manage those. In the next session, which is a part two of this one, we're going to talk about how you can customize your layout so it works best for you by dragging and dropping windows, just holding down the mouse key. I'll get into more of that as we're going forward. And if you ever mess anything up or delete, how to go back and reset those to the particular layout that you want for the work that you're doing. Sometimes you're, you want a data-based layout. Sometimes you want requirements or a process layout. Sometimes you just want a simple drawing layout. Those kind of things. We'll cover that when we get into the next video. And then we'll uh, also cover in the following video how to customize the workspace, multiple layouts that work best for you. So I hope this content was helpful for you. Please leave a like. More importantly, leave comments. I'm really interested in comments, feedback, good or bad, to what you want to see and what you want to get out of these sessions. Subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified as videos are being uploaded. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.